Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to play a scene from a popular TV show called The Office. The Office is a super funny show. It's very, very popular in the States. And apparently it used to be a British show, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a scene from the American version of the TV show. Now, unlike some other comedy shows, for ESL learners, The Office might be very hard. That's what she said. <laughs> It might be difficult for ESL learners to fully understand the comedy in this TV show, not only because the characters speak fast, but also because these characters are very quirky and they have very strong personalities. So if you don't understand the cultural references or the characters' personalities, you just might not find it funny. In the following scene, you're going to see a group of employees who are in a meeting and a funny situation unfolds. Now, The Office is a funny TV show and it's set in an office and it shows the mundane daily life of these employees at a paper company. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. I'm going to play the clip now and then we're going to break it down line by line. Come on, Michael, you're, you're interrupting. You're kidding me. God, you say right on is silent but deadly and then you expect me not to make farty noises with my mouth. What is this? Please sit down. You know what? We're not going to die of radon. We're going to die of boredom. Yeah. <laughs> right? And if I had a gun with two bullets and I was in a room with Hitler, Bin Laden, and Toby, I would shoot Toby twice. No. Oh. That's yeah. fine. Okay. You were All being right. really funny and then you went too far. I would kill Bin Laden and then Toby. No, that's, that's still... So okay, geniuses, how would you do it? Curve the bullet like in my favorite James McAvoy film, uh, Wadi. <laughs> All that does is help you shoot around things. What does been locked? Is there a curtain rod in the room? I don't know. How about make believe land as anything you want? Stanley, please, this is serious. Yeah. Is this the thing where they use an icicle so there's no evidence? Yes. We stab Toby Come through the heart on. with an icicle. The whole two bullet thing is a red herring. Here's how you do it. You line them all up, you take one bullet, shoot them all through the throat at the same time. Watch this. Phyllis, you're Hitler. Come up here. Toby, you're Toby. Andy, you're Bin Laden. Line up. I don't want to do it. Throats together. Toby, just do it! Toby, oh come on. God! Ready? One bullet. And boom! Yeah, that works. That works. So how much of that conversation did you guys understand? Let's break it down line by line. Come on, Michael. You're, you're interrupting. You're kidding me! God! You say right on is silent but deadly, and then you expect me not to make farting noises with my mouth? What is this? So Michael says, you're kidding me. God, you say right on is silent but deadly, and then you, you expect me not to make farting noises with my mouth? What is this? So right on is a radioactive gas. And Michael is making a joke here because Toby has said that right on is silent but deadly. Now this joke is kind of bad taste and I personally don't like talking about farting jokes, but this is a farting joke. So in English, we say that when someone farts or they pass gas, as you can say, it can be silent but deadly. And I hate to have to explain this, but if a fart is silent but deadly, it means that the person who has farted has not made a noise, but <laughs> the smell is very, very bad. That's the joke there. So Toby has said radon is silent but deadly and Michael feels compelled because he's a childish character to say, to make farting noises with his mouth. No, well, we're not gonna die of radon. We're gonna die of boredom. Yeah. <laughs> right? Michael then says, we're not going to die of radon. We're going to die of boredom. So in this episode, Toby, who is the HR or human resources representative uh, in this TV show, he is holding a meeting and talking about radon. So this radioactive gas, it's a safety meeting. So Michael says during the meeting, we're not going to die of radon. We're going to die of boredom. To say that someone is going to die of boredom is a hyperbole. So it's an exaggeration. You can't actually die from boredom. But Michael here is expressing that this meeting is so boring that they're all going to die because of that. And if I had a gun with two bullets and I was in a room with Hitler, Bin Laden, and Toby, I would shoot Toby twice. No. 
Now, for those of you who watch this TV show, you know that for some reason, Toby is a, is a hated character and Michael really hates Toby. So he says in this line, if I had a gun with two bullets and I was in a room with Hitler, Bin Laden and Toby, I would shoot Toby twice. This is a very extreme, humorous, hypothetical situation. And in these lines, Michael is emphasizing that even though Hitler and Bin Laden, who are two despicable figures in history, even though they are in the room with Michael, he would choose to use the two bullets on Toby to shoot him twice. And these lines show just how much Michael hates Toby. Poor Toby. I feel so bad for him in this TV show. Let's keep going. Yeah. Okay. You were All right. being really funny and then you went too far. I okay, so the whole group says that's not okay. That's not okay. So that means it's not acceptable to say that. That is just a brutal thing to say to someone, especially when you are in their presence. Dwight then says you were being really funny and then you went too far. If someone says you went too far, it means that you've crossed a line. You say something that's inappropriate and unacceptable. So Michael here has crossed the line because he's chosen to talk about Hitler and Bin Laden and he's tried to emphasize that he hates Toby more than he hates these two people. I would kill Bin Laden and then Toby. No, it's still... still Michael then tries to soften or, or um, smooth over the situation by saying, okay, I would kill Bin Laden and then Toby, which Michael's trying here, but the humorous situation is that uh, he still chooses to kill Toby over Hitler. Okay, geniuses, how would you do it? Curve the bullet like in my favorite James McAvoy film, uh, Water. <laughs> Okay, so then the character Creed, uh, who by the way is like probably my favorite character because he's just so weird and I really like weird characters. Uh, he says, um, so Michael asks, how would you do it? How would you handle uh, this situation, which is that you only have two bullets, but you have Bin Laden, Hitler, and Toby in a room. So Creed suggests curve the bullet, like in my favorite James McAvoy film, Wanted. So here's a reference to a movie. I personally do not know this film, so I did a little bit of research before I started to film this. And I'll show a couple of clips, one or two clips from the movie and, and explain what this means. So as you guys can see, curving the bullet, um, it means shooting a gun and then the bullet doesn't go in a straight line, it curves. Well, all that does is help you shoot around things. What does is there a And then Oscar says, all that does is help you shoot around things. So I'll play the clip again. As you guys can see in this clip, a, cur a bullet that curves goes around things and hits something else. So in other words, it's not really a solution to having two bullets and three people that need to be killed. So does Bin Laden is there a curtain rod in the room? I don't know. Oh. Ryan then says, is there a curtain rod in the room? So at this point, everyone is kind of involved in this conversation about how to kill these people. And as far as I know, this isn't a reference to a specific film, but Ryan is just brainstorming ways to potentially kill someone um, if you only have two bullets. So if they're in a room with a curtain rod, and I'll put a picture of a curtain rod somewhere here, um, it could be used as a weapon. So potentially a solution. <laughs> About make believe land as anything you want. Stanley. Stanley then says, how about make believe land as anything you want? Uh, as you guys know, if you watch The Office, Stanley is the character who is kind of over it. He thinks everyone is out to lunch, uh, which means that they're kind of crazy. And um, Stanley is saying, how about make believe land has anything you want, which means in other words, you guys are talking about this hypothetical situation, this fantastical situation. And because this isn't real, 
Let's just pretend you can have anything in this room. So in other words, you guys are talking crazy already. Let's just assume you can have anything. Stanley, please, this is serious. Is this Jim then says, Stanley, please, this is serious. So Jim is always trying to make it seem like things are serious, even though he knows that people are acting ridiculously around him. Is this the thing where they use an icicle so there's no evidence? <laughs> the conversation gets progressively more outlandish and ridiculous. Uh, so Angela says, is this the thing where they use an icicle so there's no evidence? This line would be super, super confusing to an ESL speaker. Angela here is referencing a riddle <laughs> where there is where there's no evidence of a murder. So in, in this riddle, someone has died and all that you can see is a puddle of water near them. And the question is, how did they die? And they die by being stabbed with an icicle. I'll put a picture of an icicle on the screen. So an icicle is frozen water and it forms into like a pointy weapon-like thing. And so in the riddle, uh, someone gets stabbed with an icicle and they die. And then the icicle melts into a puddle. So Angela here is saying, are we talking about a riddle? A riddle where there's people who have died and there's no evidence. Yes, we stabbed Toby through the heart with an icicle. And then in, in that line, Michael clarifies that, yes, we stab Toby through the heart with an icicle. So again, a reference to a riddle. The whole two bullet thing is a red herring. Here's how you do it. You line them all up, you take one bullet, shoot them all through the throat at the same time. Watch this. Phyllis, you're Hitler. Come up here. Toby, you're Toby. Andy, you're Bin Laden. Line up. I, I don't want to do Throats it. together. Toby, just do it! Toby, come on. Okay, so Dwight says the whole two bullet thing is a red herring. So what is a red herring? A red herring is something that is intended to mislead or distract someone. So Dwight is saying here that we are being distracted. The, the issue is not the two bullets. He's saying that we need to focus on something else. And in this case, Dwight is going to suggest that actually three people can be killed with one bullet. So in fact, having two bullets is not the issue. So Dwight very humorously tells Phyllis, Andy, and Toby to line up. And he says that you can shoot them all through the throat at the same time. This is funny because it's ridiculous and it would be impossible to kill three people by having a bullet go through all three of their throats. That only happens in movies. Dwight tells Phyllis, he says, Phyllis, you're Hitler. Toby is Toby. And Andy is Bin Laden. And for some reason, Andy is super stoked about being Bin Laden. So this scene is getting progressively crazier and uh, ridiculous. Ready? One bullet. And boom! Yeah, that works. That works. So Dwight go goes so far as to act out this one bullet going through all three of their throats. And Toby obviously is not very happy about that. He doesn't look very stoked or very excited about this whole situation, which is brainstorming how to kill him. And to top it all off, everyone's clapping in this meeting. They're all saying, that works, good work. <laughs> and the good work is that Toby is dead. And Michael's very pleased about that because as I've said in this TV show, Michael just really hates Toby. So what makes this scene and what makes this TV show so funny? Well, this scene started out as kind of like a normal work meeting, a safety meeting about the dangers of radon. And then it changes into a very <laughs> over the top ridiculous scene in which they're brainstorming how to kill Toby, Bin Laden, and Hitler. Now, for those of us who watch this TV show, we know that all of the characters have very unique personalities. And what's so funny about this scene is that all of the characters are getting involved and they're all playing a role in this brainstorming. So our expectations and the outcome are very different for this scene. Our expectation is that it's going to be a boring safety meeting 
And the reality is that it bec becomes a meeting about how to kill Toby, the person who is leading the meeting, the meeting in which these characters or these employees are going to learn how to be safe and protect their lives at work. So that's it, you guys. I hope you found this video informative. Now, I personally love this TV show and I hope you guys enjoyed my analysis of it. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and make sure you turn on alerts so that you can get notified about my new content. I'll publish a video next weekend and I look forward to reading the comments that you guys leave me and helping you to improve your English skills. That's it. Bye for now.